welcome you all on the Q4 FY22 earnings call of Apollo Pipes Limited. From management side, we have with us Mr. Samir Gupta, the managing director, Mr. Ajay Kumar, the chief financial officer, and Mr. Anubhav Gupta, group chief strategy officer. We shall start the call with brief opening remarks from the management side and then open the call for the questions. Over to you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our Q4 and FY22 earnings call to discuss the operating and financial performance. I hope you all had the opportunity to go through our results presentation, which provides details of our operational and financial performance for the fourth quarter and full year ended 31st March 2022. To begin with, I am pleased to unveil the performance which has been outstanding compared to the CAGR of the industry in this segment. We have reported strong performance during the quarter with our sales volume going by 26% YOY to 16409 metric tons per annum. Healthy contribution from the LTP, CPVC pipes, and value added product segments were the major drivers for the growth, complemented by expanding product portfolio, increasing reach in newer geographies, and incremental downfield capacities. Over the next few quarters, we anticipate this sales performance trend to strengthen led by an improving demand environment, expansion in addressable markets, and a sustained uptick in utilization levels. Moving on to the operational front, the company did an annual capex of 42 CR towards enhancement of capacity, debottlenecking, and adding balancing equipments majorly in CPVC, LTP pipes, and fittings. The management continued to keep strong focus on value added products on the building board side, which continue to gain traction. The impact of improved capacity in earlier quarter has a visible growth in sales of automotive products. Going forward, we remain confident that this product, along with our, our other value-added offerings like fittings, solvent cements, bath fittings, adhesives, staffs, faucets, will enhance our reach and sales, strengthen sales. Additionally, we are aiming towards optimally utilizing our capacity over the next coming years, which will also help augment sales volume going ahead. On branding media campaign around Tiger Shroff as a brand uh, and Malta continue to garner good response and recently we launched our TV commercial which will further strengthen our brand positioning in the market. To conclude, I would like to state that we are continuously working towards enhancing our presence across existing and new potential geographies. As we further improve our operation capacity, capacity utilization of our rifle plant, we are confident to open up the end tap market and high potential markets of Central and Eastern India with the positive trend in industrial growth in the current year 2022-2023. Going forward, we expect to deliver a robust performance in the quarters to come and further gain momentum on the back of Make, of Make in India's journey for improved profitability, strategic expansion in key geographical areas, better brand acceptance and recall. Now I would like to invite Mr. Ajay Jain to run you through the key financial highlights of the quarter and period ending 31st March 22. Good afternoon, everyone. I will briefly cover the financial performance during the quarter and full year ending 31st March 2022. The company delivered solid operational and financial performance during the quarter, driven by an uptick in demand and consumption in key domestic markets. Revenue from operations for the quarter stood at 247.5 crores as against 174.2 crores in Q4 FY21, higher by 42%, and FY22 revenue growth was even better at 51% YOY, with revenues of 784.1 crore against 518.1 crore last year. Sales volume for the quarter stood at 16,409 metric ton reporting a growth of 26% as against 12,987 metric ton. And FY22 sales volume stood at 53,849 metric ton as against 47,333 metric ton, up by 14%. On the profitability front, EBITDA for the quarter improved by 5% YOY to rupees 28.4 crores versus 27 uh, crores in Q4 FY21. Aveta margin, which stood at 11.5% in Q4 FY22, was lower by 406 dips YOY. Aveta for FY22 stood at 
93.4 crores as against 74.3 crores, growing by 26% YOY with EBITDA margin at 11.9% for FY22 versus 14.3% during corresponding period last year, lower by 242 BIPs YOY. Going forward, we anticipate EBITDA margin trends to sustain. During the quarter, higher depreciation and financial costs impacted net profit. Depreciation costs stood at 7.1 crores in Q4 FY22 as against 5.8 crores in FY21, growing by 23%. Financial cost was higher by 95% during Q4. Net profit for the quarter stood at 15.6 crores, declined by 6% YOY when compared to Rs. 16.6 crores in Q4 FY21. Net profit for FY22 grew by 12%, stood at Rs. 49.8 crore as against Rs. 44.5 crore in FY21. Net margin during the year a period stood at 6.3% as compared to 8.6% in FY21, lower by 224 bps. On the balance sheet front, our net cash position stood healthy around 3.3 crore in FY22 with healthy cash flow generation and improving capacity utilization levels, we are in the planning mode for our next phase of CapEx, which will be focused towards value-added products, witnessing strong demand trends. CapEx will be largely funded from internal cash flows. On the working capital front, additional raw material requirements at newly commissioned capacities has moderately impacted inventory levels, though our endeavor remains on maintaining our overall working capital cycle at stable levels. With this, I would now request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from line of Ankit from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh so, uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a uh, uh, decent set of numbers given the uh, volatility seen in uh, PVC prices and uh, good growth in the volume that we have seen. So, uh, if you can give us the broad take-up of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, split of revenues in agri and building segments. So, what has been the, the break-up of sales from agri segment and the, and the building segment for Q4? FI22 and uh, FI22 uh, full year, and uh, the outlook for both the segments for uh, next year as of uh, as we are seeing currently. Yes. Hi. Uh, good evening. This is Anubhav Gupta. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so between uh, the agri and uh, building material, if you see the mix uh, broadly, we closed FI22 at 50/50. Uh, um, right, which was uh, 40, 60 uh, in the beginning, and we improved it to 50, 50 through all the quarters. And uh, and with uh, CPVC and uh, bathroom fittings and water tanks uh, growing uh, at much faster pace uh, versus the overall growth of the company, uh, we see this uh, mix will move towards uh, 60, 40, and uh, 65, 35 eventually. And plus, also the push uh, we will get from uh, the uh, the media campaign which we started, so that also will help us uh, build our brand uh, in the building material category um, at the accelerated pace. Um, so, so we believe that uh, uh, we are on track to get to 65, 35 uh, kind of sales mix towards uh, building material. Uh, outlook for uh, both the segments, you know, building materials, we have been doing pretty well for past uh, uh, some time now. But agri, last two years have been tough on about. So, you know, uh, given the, 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 the increase in prices of, you know, uh, agri products, do you, think, do you think the agri demand might also revive 
uh, in uh, next year or like and how is how's been the demand for the month of for april and starting first week of may so you can talk about on agri particularly so see it's it was a conscious call that we focused more on the building material in last two years okay the pro, mm-hmm. the portfolio which we built uh, the distribution network which we expanded this was targeted towards uh, higher sales towards building material products right agri um, as a conscious call uh, because the margins were low and and of course because of the increasing pvc prices uh, the overall demand was slightly low versus what uh, uh, what uh, demand we were seeing in the building material products so we so we were uh, pretty slow on agri side and also the collection receivables uh, which are uh, which are always uh, a bit on the tricky side when you are doing government projects so i guess i guess i mean as a overall uh, broader strategy um, i mean uh, we do believe that our brand has uh, still a lot of scope to grow aggressively in the building material category um, we have just started our uh, ad campaign uh, which is uh, giving us very good uh, pull uh, for our products from our distributors our channel partners and and all the new products which we have added in the last 2 to 3 years whether it is uh, cpvc whether it is uh, fittings whether it is water tanks whether it is bathroom fittings um, i mean this will this will drive our building material sales uh, in a in a significant way over the next 2 years and agree we have the capacity right today we have capacity of 125000 ton and we did around 53000 ton uh, in fi22 so we still have a lot of capacity um, uh, for agri uh, pipes if uh, demand is good we can always push our volume but not at the cost of margin number 1 and number 2 is the extended working capital cycle so sure, but q1 uh, is, is the biggest season for agri so how has been the demand uh, in agri on agri side uh, during it Yes, yes. So April has started on good note uh, because seasonally it is the strongest quarter for agri. So we are on track uh, now to achieve our uh, uh, our our targets uh, in the agri business based on the Q1 seasonality. The trends have been uh, good. I think for benefit of everyone, uh, what I can uh, tell you is that uh, we are looking for uh, 30% revenue CAGR for the next three years, uh, right? Right from FY23 through FY25. and uh, and obviously the more incremental sales will come from the building till side and if agri sector uh, does well for us uh, we could grow beyond 30% also so so and uh, i mean certainly in the margin side last uh, two three quarters we have seen that you know our margins have come uh, in the range of around 11 12 12 and a half percentage so you know and uh, during the same time we have also seen significant volatility on the pvc side so you know uh, if we have to look at it in a stable pvc price and i mean what kind of sustainable margins can we see in the company so if you see our last four years uh, which we are proud to say that we have increased our market share from 1% to 2.5% uh, today okay uh, we used to be at ebitda per ton of 9500 right if you look at fi18 numbers we used to be at 9500 per ton at ebitda level FI22 we closed at 17,500 per ton, okay. Mm. And even last year FI21 uh, we were at around 15,000 uh, per ton at EBITDA level. So, so we so will see that we have significantly improved our EBITDA per ton, which I think should be the right metric uh, uh, in the industry to uh, to evaluate uh, the margins because margins uh, look deceptive because uh, of the increase in the net uh, selling price. which is uh, due to the increase in the pvc raise in prices right so mm-hmm. and it is all passed through right so what i would urge our uh, investors shareholders and uh, and analysts on the street is that uh, you should evaluate uh, us at least or other rpas also on the beta pattern level because because uh, it will give you the clear picture rather than on 11% 12% but but that being said that being said uh, um, i mean uh, overall we still maintain that when we say 30% revenue cagr over the next 3 years so whatever number you would come at we should be around uh, uh, 30 14% at ebitda level and at ebitda per ton level uh, we should be at 20000 per ton so okay. uh, so, so we are we are pretty much satisfied with our uh, ebitda ebitda per ton uh, performance and the 30% revenue growth that you guys are targeting will this be largely driven by 
volume or you know product mix also you know moving towards uh, more cpvc and value added products it will be it will be mix of both uh, uh, because a lot of products we just added in the last two years which are yet to scale up and uh, and and all the incremental capacity is which will come uh, in the company that will be only towards value added products so 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 our overall nsr uh, because of the product mix improvement and uh, the volume growth uh, should uh, move in tandem what what kind of volume growth are you looking for the next three years in some uh, yeah i think it um, um, i mean um, it is it is uh, i mean if if i break it up into my current uh, portfolio and the and the new capacity which will come up so i guess uh, i mean uh, 15 to 20% minimum volume growth uh, we are looking at and uh, 10% uh, should be the value growth right irrespective of uh, the increase in the raise in prices so so our current business model does not factor in any like sharp increase in the pvc raise in prices and what will drive this 10% 10 to 12 10 to 15% kind of you know uh, realization improvement because uh, because the products uh, which are going faster um, in the overall portfolio they uh, they are uh, anyways uh, better realizable products and they have uh, better margins also so like for example cpvc uh, which is growing at a very high um, uh, very high rate uh, for us um, bathroom fittings water tanks all these categories are growing above 70 80% for us Uh, and this last question on the CPVC raising availability. So you know we have been hearing that you know last year has been tough on in terms of procuring CPVC raising. Uh, raising. So how is the situation currently, and how are we placed in this situation where you know the supply of uh, CPVC is facing challenge? Yeah. Hi, Ankit. Yeah, regarding the supplies of CPVC raising, it is uh, right now we have got contract, long-term contracts with. some of the players and we are very much in a comfortable position in terms of supply of the product we are getting regular supplies from our suppliers and there is no such constraint at our end of course there is some uh, you can challenges are there uh, in from in the industry to procure but as far as apollo is concerned we are, we are very much comfortable in very much in comfortable zone so thank you and wish you all the best thank you participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of anika mittal from invest research please go ahead uh hello good evening sir am i audible yeah hello. go ahead please uh, okay uh, so uh, my first question is uh, what's the portion of this uh, fittings and cpvs particularly in our uh, revenue mix for financial year 22 so if you see our our uh, our uh, fittings uh, um, the um, the proportion will be around uh, 15% okay and uh, what about the uh, this cpv uh cpvc uh, again will be of the same range uh, 15% you are saying yeah right okay and sir uh, uh, can you tell the demand outlook for the next year uh, for our products particularly the building side products Yeah, so we are pretty much confident of uh, of uh, of healthy growth uh, um, <clears throat> because, uh, like I said, that we are targeting we are targeting 30% revenue growth, which will be constituting of uh, 15 to 20% volume growth and rest uh, and rest uh, uh, value growth. Um, so there are like two three factors which I like to highlight. One is that uh, our our uh, southern and uh, western plants and even the new Raipur plant, which we started last year, so they are ramping up quite well. we are uh, expanding into new markets we are adding new distributors new channel points and even our retailer base is uh, expanding secondly uh, secondly um, all the new products which we have added in the last two years so their capacities are uh, ramping up uh, for cpvc for bathroom fittings uh, we may have to increase capacities uh, because whatever we set up uh, thinking our initial targets we we achieve those targets much uh, in advance so so uh, so we may have to expand capacities there third uh, like i said our 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 uh, brand campaign which started it uh, started on a very good note we are getting good response from our channel partners there are there is good motivation level in our sales team and in our channel partners uh, uh, backed by this uh, ad campaign which we started so so overall uh, and and housing demand uh, i mean if we look at the other building material sectors uh, whatever companies have 
come up uh, with the with the results so far and whatever commentary they have given i think people are talking about uh, like uh, high high single digit or uh, or or low double digit uh, growth at industry level at at every building materials product category so i think if we are able to achieve a 10% growth in in uh, in pvc space at the industry level for us to uh, 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 grow at 30% uh, shouldn't be a challenge which we have demonstrated in the last four years already so we believe that uh, this uh, growth momentum should sustain going forward okay 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 got it okay. and so my next question is uh, what are the developments by our company towards this uh, technology side for our product basket in future since like uh, in the recent past also we are doing uh, innovative products is there anything going on towards uh, this innovative side for future also so see, i mean some of the uh, some of the addition keeps on uh, happening um, okay some um, some um, some ideas are already in our mind uh, but but i guess for next one to two years you will see what we will like to see is that the proportion the contribution from basketings from water tanks and from cpvc um, uh, category these should uh, ramp up significantly and uh, these products will contribute uh, maximum to our incremental sales uh beyond that uh, our our focus is to keep on adding new squs within these uh, product categories um, okay and uh, and and yes um, very soon um, i mean we may come up with uh, something uh, something uh, something more value added products also but uh, but uh, let us talk about uh, when uh, there is right time about it Okay. Ah, okay. uh, sir. Uh, actually, you mentioned that uh, your EBITDA per turns will be somewhere around twenty thousand in future. So, is it so you are talking about next year or next to next year? No, two to three years. Or this is the guidance for next year. Yeah. So, I think uh, when we are saying that thirty percent volume carrier over the next three years, and yes. from seventeen thousand five hundred to twenty thousand per turn, that's a three-year journey we are talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. So, twenty thousand EBITDA per turn is for the next three years. We are saying. yeah this right uh, so that's on a that's on a um, uh, conservative approach uh, we are guiding this number uh, to to investors and um, and and if if uh, if uh, if demand uh, is uh, stronger than expected if if uh, the brand pull what we are expecting um, um, becomes better so uh, so we could uh, uh, we could do better than this but this is uh, i mean a minimum that we should achieve over the next 3 years okay got it got it sir. thank thank you very much sir. thank you very much thank you our students you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from line of kaushal shah from danki securities please go ahead yeah thank you very much for the opportunity uh so i had a uh, you know follow up question to uh, the previous participant um uh, if you know, if i look look at our historical uh, we have kind of you know doubled our volumes in the last 5 uh, years and now we are talking of doubling our volumes uh, more or less in the next 3 years so just wanted some more color on that uh, you know which are the segments that we are targeting and also Uh, maybe some thoughts on the capex uh, uh, over the next two to three years, which may be required. I mean, even if you know we may be um, doing around ninety-five thousand uh, or maybe a uh, hundred thousand tons of volume, but what kind of capex will be uh, needed to you know ramp up the capacity? So some thoughts on that. Right. So, uh, so just one clarification that uh, we have uh, uh, doubled our uh, revenue, not the volume, right? And the guidance to more than double uh, is also revenue in the next three years, not the volume, right? So, 30% revenue carrier we are talking about, uh, right? So, so the drivers, uh, the the key drivers for this um, uh, aggressive growth uh, um, uh, are various. Uh, okay, so one is the the product expansion what we have done in the last two years right so those products uh, will ramp up we see uh, we see good demand for those products uh, we have already started marketing those products the acceptance has been good from our clients from our customers and now as the uh, production is ramping up uh, um, there is uh, there is good um, there is good volume which we are getting from these newer products which we launched in last two years second uh, the distribution uh, uh, at the distribution side the work our sales team has done is quite commendable right today we have 6700 uh, direct channel partners and who are supplying our products to at least 25000 retailers 
Okay, so the net addition, what we see over the next two, three years is again 10%. Obviously, the gross addition will be higher, but then we also rationalize our existing uh, partners. So the net addition uh, will be 10% year on year over the next three years. Then uh, over the last two, three years, the below the line uh, branding, what we have done, right? Whether it is towards uh, the in-shop branding, the, the, uh, at the plumber side, who are the influencers here, Right, so that has given us a very good platform to now launch our above the line um, um, brand campaign. So we started in November uh, through uh, social media. Um, we were waiting for uh, for uh, for that uh, uh, campaign to uh, to show us some ROI. Right, after seeing that for last three four months, only then we took a call. Now is the time to launch it on TV commercial, which we started in on second May. Right. So, uh, so, uh, so, so the response which we got on social media uh, was uh, uh, was quite commendable, right? And and that gave us confidence that yes, now we should move towards uh, uh, the the TV campaign also, which is much expensive. Uh, so we were trying to test waters, and and the results were positive. And then we moved ahead and launched uh, TV commercial. It's been only a week uh, till today. But uh, but again, I mean the response, uh, whatever uh, the sound, what we are hearing. Is, is very encouraging. Then, then uh, the capacity which is lying with us uh, at 125,000 ton. Uh, I mean, if you look at the overall uh, utilization rate, it is still 45%. But assuming that uh, one can achieve 75-80% capacity utilization levels in PVC pipe, two seasonality, etc., still there is like good 50-60% volume jump which could happen from the existing uh, facilities, right? So, uh, so, so that ramp up will start uh, uh, showing numbers in FI23 onwards. Um, uh, um, uh, on to the previous uh, uh, to the previous participant we uh, we mentioned that our our uh, our uh, our uh, sub pvc supply uh, pvc supply has been uh, at a very comfortable situation whatever happening at a global level um, uh, due to the supply chain disruption but we have ensured that our plants are always uh, well uh, uh, stocked with the pvc resin so that um, so that we never uh, uh, see shortage of uh, PVC resin uh, to run our plants. Uh, then we are getting good uh, leverage from the uh, overall uh, uh, group uh, branding, which is APL Apollo. So the, uh, over there also the uh, the growth has been quite high, and uh, and uh, and uh, we definitely get the leverage in the building material category when we talk about either steel tubes or PVC pipes. So, and and uh, we have been very uh, we have been very uh, very very uh, categorically cautious on our quality standards. So today our our products uh, are in line with the um, I mean top five uh, players if you look at the quality standards, right? So so all the repeat uh, customers uh, either from the trade channel or from whatever little OEM business we do. Um, the, uh, the, uh, um, the 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 feedback on our quality has also been very good, and and whatever new plants we have started, we have ramped up. We have ensured that uh, uh, we are achieving higher quality standards every time. And and uh, we have also um, lastly, I mean, before we move to the capex, uh, um, um, uh, the the uh, the last point I like to highlight is the improvement in the serviceability to our clients. What we have done over the last uh, one to two years. Uh, uh, we have expanded our sales team in a big way, who are servicing our distributors, uh, and and uh, we have improved our supply chain uh, logistics also significantly. We have uh, we have uh, got new people, new talent in the operations also. So we are ensuring that uh, the order fulfillment uh, ratio has improved. Uh, uh, the the servicing to the customer, secondary sales also we are uh, uh, we have started doing a bit uh, uh, through our sales team. So so all these factors. Uh, uh, have helped us to to achieve whatever we have achieved in the last two three years, and and we are confident that uh, this will continue over the next three years. Now coming to the capex, uh, um, like I said, today we are at 45% uh, utilization, uh, um, so a lot of scope to improve uh, levels utilization levels from here. But if you see if our last three four years of growth phase, we have always spent uh, 40 50 crore of uh, capex every year. Uh, we were at a we were a 30 40 crore EBITDA company. Now we are at a, we are a 95 crore EBITDA company. So we are in much uh, comfortable situation to spend 40 50 crores uh, on annual basis. Given that our operating cash flow to EBITDA is uh, 60 65 percent, 
um, uh, we will continue to spend this much of money to increase our capacity to do value addition, uh, capacity expansion, and also try to innovate uh, uh, new products. So, so yeah, I mean, going forward, 40, 50 crore kind of EBITDA, uh, 40, 50 kind, kind, 40, 50 crore kind of capex uh, budget, uh, you can assume. Right. So, Anubhav, uh, just one follow-up to that. Um, uh, you spoke about, uh, you know, 30% CAGR in revenues. Um, uh, you know, that would mean roughly maybe 1,500 crore type of number or maybe even more than that. Sir, so, sorry to interrupt you. Can I request you to speak louder, please? Yeah. So, uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was saying that, uh, you know, at this 30% CAGR, we will be roughly doubling our numbers uh, in the next three years. Uh, that will also mean, uh, you know, a decent requirement for working capital. So any thoughts on that? Where, we, where would we want to take the working capital days? Um, is there a chance that we can shrink, uh, you know, the current numbers uh, in the working capital? Well, yes, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, if you see last year we were at 55 days, uh, uh, FI 21, FI 22, we closed at slightly higher 60 days. Uh, but, but that is only because of a uh, slight increase in the inventory levels. If you look at the collections and, uh, and uh, creditors, payables, I mean, they are pretty much in line. Inventory, um, during end of uh, financial year, when we saw, um, uh, when we saw global supply chain getting disrupted, uh, due to Ukraine Russia war, so we were slightly cautious to uh, stock some of the raw material, and not only PVC but the other chemicals, additives, uh, and uh, and uh, other kind of raw material as well. So that's why it is looking slightly uh, uh, slightly high on the higher side. But uh, but yes, I mean if you see, um, I mean our target is to take our working capital cycle below 50 days, uh, right? Uh, once things improve uh, um, globally uh, and at the supply chain level, um, we uh, we target to finish our net WC at 50 days in FI23 and then 45 days in FI24. Great. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from line of Aman Agarwal from Equarius Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, firstly, on the uh, Chhattisgarh CAPEX, uh, which got commissioned a few months ago, so how is the traction we are witnessing for the central region from there? And uh, secondly, are we also catering the eastern market uh, from that plant? Yeah, so, uh, so I mean, uh, I mean uh, that CAPEX was uh, done uh, keeping in mind two things. One was to penetrate in the agri belt of Central India, which was uh, uh, NP and Chhattisgarh, and then to uh, start selling in our eastern markets uh, towards building material side, right? So, so the total CAPEX uh, uh, was uh, uh, was uh, completed in month of March, April last year. So it's been almost like 11, 12 months of uh, operations we have seen. And, uh, and we are targeted to ramp up this plant uh, in the next two years. So the first 12 months uh, performance has been uh, as per expectations, right? And, uh, and, and the results are encouraging. We have been able to add uh, good distributors uh, as well there, right? And, uh, and with the help of our above the line uh, campaign, media campaign, uh, uh, we, uh, we are hopeful that uh, even the year two of operations should yield uh, results as per the expected lines. Sure, sir. Sure. And uh, so, so on KPEX that you mentioned that uh, we'll be going in for KPEX for value-added products. So, uh, uh, would it be uh, in, a, in you know predominantly in the northern region, or uh, you'll be uh, scattering it to multiple plants? Or what's the strategy over there for the upcoming KPEX? Right. So, the maximum expansion you may see in our north uh, facility for the value-added products. But because value-added product, the logistic, uh, the freight uh, doesn't uh, uh, doesn't come into play uh, um, significantly. So uh, so we will build the capacity at one place, but then it will feed uh, all India, right? Uh, so one is there. And second, uh, that being said, uh, we'll also add capacity in our southern plant in Bangalore for the value-added products. But but yeah, majority of capacity will come in north, but that will feed that plant will feed whole of India. Okay. Okay, and so for the uh, you know capex uh, related to pipes, uh, will uh, we won't be seeing capex related to pipes for a few years? I mean, for for at least uh, you know a couple of years. 
until we ramp up the capacity utilization. We already mentioned that we are sitting at 45% and, uh, you know, one can go up to 70, 75% factoring in seasonality. So apart from the value-added products, uh, you know, would we be seeing the capacity addition for price anytime soon? Yeah, so you can assume that 80-90% of our money will go towards uh, non-pipe uh, capacity addition. Okay. Sure, sure. sure. So, so lastly, on our uh, you know, PVC resin procurement, uh, uh, you know, how how is the issue going on now right now for the imports versus release yet for PVC and CPUC? CPUC, I guess, would largely be imported, but for PVC. Yeah, regarding the raw materials, yeah, we are still on the same line. We are procuring almost 70% you can say from imports and 30% from Indian sources. And of course, imports is always cheaper as compared to the local sources. So we are trying to maintain the same. Earlier we were trying to increase the local uh, buying, but seeing the scenario, we are still on the same line of procuring from outside India. Sure. Sure. That's it from my side. Thanks for the project. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bhargav Buddhadev from Kora Castle Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon team and congrats on a good performance. Uh, my first question is, uh, uh, would it be possible to highlight what could be the overlap uh, in terms of distribution between your basketing business and your pipe business? So the channel is same, uh, Bhargav, almost same. Okay. Secondly, uh, in the last two years, the trade table days uh, have been uh, coming down. Um, so, I mean, it was earlier 60-65 days, it has reduced about 30-35 days. Uh, now that uh, the raw material situation is uh, uh, likely to improve going forward, do we expect trade table days to again go back to historical levels or this is where it should be maintained or so, uh, so see, I mean, uh, we have uh, lowered our cycle credit credit payables from uh, 34 to 26, right? So I guess uh, 26 to 30 should be the new normal going forward now that we are getting um, better terms uh, as our scale is increasing, whether it is exports or uh, or, or domestic. And, uh, and going forward, uh, we are confident that uh, it should remain between 25 to 30 days. Okay. Uh, lastly, in terms of working capital cycle, uh, is the cycle significantly different between your south and non-south markets? I mean, is there uh, uh, a way to sort of uh, optimize the working capital cycle in south and hence improve your overall working capital days? So, I mean, obviously, not being our stronger market, whether uh, uh, the, uh, the, the terms we have with our distributors in the northern market, and uh, second, uh, since our uh, uh, mother plant is in north, so the inventory stocking, etc., also becomes more efficient in our north plant. So, if you compare north versus south, yes, I mean, um, north should be slightly better. Uh, but uh, but but I guess that should remain unless we make south as big as uh, our uh, north, uh, which will take time. And also the the brand uh, uh, pull what we have in North, the market share what we have in North, the domination what we have in North, to have the same uh, criteria in South. Uh, um, I mean, again, which should take time. So, so yeah, I mean, over whatever numbers we are uh, telling you, they are on overall basis. But yes, I mean, uh, North is slightly better than South. I'm sorry, one last question. You mentioned uh, uh, very aggressive uh, uh, revenue growth over the next three years, and uh, I would presume that would be primarily from your building material side. So any color in terms of how has been the channel addition in terms of non-agri uh, distributors? Has it been uh, increasing significantly as compared to your agri distributors? Yeah, so if you see, uh, I mean, our net addition, what we are targeting is 10% uh, on a base of uh, 600 distributors today and 25,000 retailers uh, today, right? Uh, going forward, uh, again, majority of this will be towards the uh, building material side. And given the products, what we have, I mean, the question which you asked, the bathroom fittings, uh, the channel, right? For the yeah. for water tanks, for, for bath fittings, uh, for CPVC, for fitting solutions. So these are our... Revenue drivers, Bhargav, right for next three years, and uh, and uh, and uh, and and the channel for all these products are same, I mean, um, which is which is uh, which has been our strategy that to create a platform, such a strong platform of uh, uh, distribution and marketing, 
right? And then to keep on adding uh, newer products uh, and uh, route it through the same channel to increase our sales and 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 get the higher wallet share from our customers, right? So I think that strategy has uh, has uh, has uh, played out well, and we do expect that it will continue to do so. And um, and and agree, like I said, I mean we have the capacity, right? Uh, we have the uh, platform, we have the network also. Whenever we feel comfortable to push our sales down that channel, uh, we will do. And and whenever we think that uh, um, uh, margins are under pressure or the collection days are under pressure, uh, we may we may go slow there. So so this 30 percent uh, revenue growth uh, is based on I would say mild growth in the agri and the good growth in the building material side. Thank you for the clarification and all the very best. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from line of Uday Chavan from Rise in Prices. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so just a name correction. It's Vijay Gohan. Uh, yeah, so congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, so I have like a couple of questions like... Uh, uh, like management has mentioned about the growth journey of 30% CAGR for the next three years. But uh, like what kind of ROC target we are looking to end up at the three-year journey? Currently, we are sitting at around 16% uh, as of FY22. Right. So, so see, I mean, if you if you see the ROCE uh, at reported, um, uh, on reported basis, it appears at 16.5%. But if you look at our business ROC, okay, uh, which is, um, I mean, core business ROC, if you just add debt and equity, so our ROC jumps to 20%, right? Um, um, I mean, again, the other way to look is uh, today our gross block is around uh, 350 crores and our uh, working capital is uh, 150 crores. So uh, so the total capital employed is around, uh, is below 500 crores. And on this, uh, we have generated um, almost 100 crore EBITDA. Um, and and uh, if you deduct 15 20 crore depreciation, that's the ROC, right? Uh, uh, but but then uh, we are already we have already uh, increased our capacities in a significant way, right? Today we are at 45 50 percent utilization level. That's why this appears low. Um, and uh, and when we are saying that we may add 40 50 crore of new capacity um, every year, and that will be towards value added products. So the EBITDA margin. Uh, 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 the beta per ton which we are mentioning uh, that also will go up so i guess uh, i mean our plan is uh, by fi 25 when we have uh, when we have, when we would have achieved uh, 30% kegar in revenue and uh, ebita of 20000 per ton we should be at least uh, having 30% roc minimum um, and and our, and our business model um, um, our business model is throwing uh, that kind of ROC. It is just that uh, optically it doesn't appear, uh, but uh, but the business is strong enough to generate 30% ROC, and uh, and over the next one two three years you will see gradual jump, um, um, so which will give more confidence uh, uh, to the investors and analysts that yes uh, we are capable of generating 30% ROC at consistent levels. Right, thanks for the clarification. And the second question is on the marketing expense. So now we have like uh, shown the like we watched a very good response on the social media campaign, and now we move to the TV channel. So what kind of like um, marketing expense we can uh, see on the recurring basis as, as percentage of revenue? Like uh, any target like uh, which we have kept to become of a more of a like a, a like a national kind of like uh, capturing national eyeballs um, on continuous basis. So yes, uh, I mean, if you see, um, uh, we started this campaign in FI22, um, uh, hiring of the brand ambassador and then making the ad sales and then running it on social media. So that all happened in FI22, and and um, and uh, the ad spends were around 1.5% of the revenue, right? Before that, it used to be around 1%. This year, FI23, we have launched a, a TV campaign. Uh, maybe we'll have two campaigns um, in, um, in 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 these 12 months. So, uh, so again, we are thinking of not um, going beyond 2% of the revenue, right? So again, we have been like very, very efficient in uh, using uh, the ad budget, right? From 1% uh, in FI21 to 2% in FI23 as a percentage of revenue, and uh, and and within these two years, I, I mean, um, appoint, appointing a brand ambassador of uh, of uh, A scale uh, Bollywood celebrity 
then uh, then uh, uh, going social media, then going on TV campaign, and then all the outdoor uh, holding media, whatever we are doing. So I guess uh, this uh, does uh, demonstrate uh, the 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 use of budgets in an efficient manner. And of course, the increase in revenue has helped as well, right? Uh, I mean, doing at 500 crores one percent and doing at uh, 1200 crores at two percent. Um, so increase in revenue has also helped us to keep this number um, at a at a very minimal level. So I guess I mean uh, um, I mean whatever we do, it shouldn't move beyond two percent as percentage of revenue in FI23. So that's why we are confident of uh, of uh, of uh, healthy margin improvement. Next, yeah, thank you. And the last thing on the sales team side, like uh, we have highlighted that some uh, new persons were hired and uh, we have been extending the distribution and dealer network. So we have currently around 450 or dealer network. So how much we are looking to add, like uh, going ahead uh, in the next three years to achieve the revenue growth of 30% on the ECR? So if you look at our sales uh, force, uh, I mean, we used to be like... Uh, uh, 100 kind of sales force uh, till last year and then in uh, last year as in FI21 and then in FI22 we increased this number to 150 right and and um, and uh, the the revenue growth targets what we have uh, I think with 200 uh, sales uh, team of 200 sales people uh, uh, we should have enough uh, enough uh, people on ground to uh, to give us these kind of uh, growth targets and on the dealer addition side, like uh, how much we are planning to add incrementally or like uh, on the year over year basis or any long term target from 450 to? Yeah, so uh, so we are at 600 today, uh, the direct channel mm -hmm. partners, not 450, we are at 600 and 25,000 okay. retailers, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, so the net addition will be 10% year on year. Right, right, right. Yeah. Thank you for detailed clarification and uh, uh, best of luck for the future. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Lan of Jiza Shah from Baroda BNP Paraba. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, what would be your uh, non-pipe revenue uh, for the year FI22 and what would be the target going forward? Mm. So I think uh, non-pipe, uh, you will want to include uh, the fittings and uh, and, uh, and and tanks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, put together that should be around uh, that should be around uh, around um, 18, 19 percent, Jigar. 18, 19. So fittings would be around 15 percent, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Fifteen percent fitting and four five percent other products. Yes. And uh, this uh, fifteen to twenty percent uh, volume guidance is including fittings or non fittings? Uh, no. So I mean, we're talking at company level, right? So so yeah. I mean, and see, I mean, if you have to break it up into sales volume uh, and uh, and uh, value, that's how it will become twenty percent volume and ten percent value, right? But uh, but if we see a quick ramp up in our value added products, so probably the volume growth could be less, but the value growth could be high, right? So I think that uh, that we'll see how our products are uh, uh, are behaving in which category and which market. But yeah, I mean uh, as a as a thumb rule, you can take 20% volume growth and 10% value growth. I mean this I was doesn't. I'm wondering because uh, your volume growth and uh, value growth is quite high. So I was just wondering uh, and, yeah. what is the non-pipe revenue so that. Uh, how, how would you achieve 30% revenue? See, the last year, actually, we have very much aggressive on the uh, value-added products, and we have received very good response from these products, and the volume growth in these products is uh, almost, you can say, 50 to 60%. So that's why we are, you are seeing a value growth much higher as compared to the volume growth. So our value-added products would be how much? Value-added products, including pipes, it should be roughly around 50 to 55%. If we exclude the pipes, it is again back to 20 to 25 percent of the total revenue. So, so you got it same. Uh, it's same. No, that um, um, I mean the building material products, which are value added products. So that is 50 percent, right? And agree is like uh, non value added. Um, so, so more or less uh, the maths remain same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
No, so H- HDP would won't be uh, evaluated, right? HDP would still uh, have a lower uh, margin of profit, right? Because the margins are very much normal in that. Yeah, of course, the revenues because of the Jal Jeevan, uh, Jal Jeevan uh, mission, we have good uh, uh, good response from this product. But the uh, that but that is that you, you cannot uh, count that as a value added. It is much more an institutional product, common common supply product. So, um, and, and just to give more clarification, Jigar, I mean, uh, the value-added products are the fittings, right, CPVC, mm-hmm. bath fittings, and tanks, right? Uh, so, so fittings, uh, we have seen 40-50% uh, growth, uh, right, in terms of revenue. Uh, okay. Bath fittings, uh, of course, they started last year, so growth has been very high. Tanks also um, have grown at very high pace uh, because of, obviously, the low base. And similarly, CPVC, um, that also is growing at um, almost 80-90% for us, right? Um, and, um, and and these are the areas where we want to expand capacities now, uh, right? So that's why we are focusing more on the overall revenue growth rather than uh, uh, giving you volume growth target. Um, um, and like I said, if the ramp up is better than expected, uh, at revenue level, we could be higher than 30% also. Understood. Uh, and my second question would be on your uh, uh, margin. In fact, uh, during the year, uh, if your uh, marketing expense and all uh, this uh, brand campaigning uh, is there, so will there be any uh, impact on that? Right. Yeah, not really because, uh, I mean, um, um, even see last year also, if you see uh, our brand spend increased from one per- below 1% to 1.5%, but our EBITDA per ton improved from 15,000 to 17,000. Right. So, and and uh, and this is on, this is without any inventory gains. I mean, I'm uh, I'm saying this on record. Uh, this EBITDA per ton does not contain any inventory gain or loss. Uh, okay. So, um, so so again, we have demonstrated that uh, improving our uh, ad spends, increasing our ad spends, shouldn't impact our EBITDA um, uh, on absolute basis or per ton basis. And uh, going forward, also we are factoring in 50 bips increase in the ad spends at two percent of revenue. We are confident that uh, the FI23 beta button should be higher than FI22. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Aditi Kasbekar, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to ask the question. Uh, actually, my question was just to clear a little bit of confusion around, you know, what is the value-added part of the business and how do you split it between fittings, uh, tanks, and CPVC pipes? So I'm sorry if this is being a little repetitive, but the way I understand it is 15% is fitting, uh, 4-5% is tanks, and another 15% is CPVC pipes, is it? And plus, yeah, broadly you are right, and plus in uh, UPVC pipes, uh, uh, that divided into agri and building material. So building material is uh, value-added. Okay. And how does that then relate to our EBITDA per ton? Because typically, I mean, uh, from the looks of it, at least uh, the value-added component is high enough. Uh, So does that still mean, I mean, uh, 17,000 per ton looks a little low in that case, isn't it? I mean, am I missing something? I just wanted to sort of clarify my doubts here. Yeah, so EBITDA per ton varies from, uh, uh, I mean, 11,000, 12,000 ton to 25,000 per ton. That's correct. That's correct. So then what we're effectively saying is that as the share of um, our uh, fittings and tanks goes up, we will have a better EBITDA per ton, is it? Because what you're effectively saying is that entire pipes you're putting under one category and just dividing between building and agri, is it? Yeah, so pipes is in two categories, which is uh, agri and building material. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, HDB pipe is all agricultural. Mm-hmm. Then Fittings, bath fittings, tanks, they are all building material. Okay, okay, understood. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Varun Jain. 
from Edelweiss Financial Service. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening, sir. I just wanted to ask, uh, at first of all, am I audible? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to ask uh, the capex number which you have guided in this. What what is the proportion of maintenance capex and what is the growth capex and what will be this uh, proportion going forward also? Maintenance will be twenty twenty five percent and seventy five percent will be growth capex. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Manish Mahavan from Antic Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, good, good evening, everyone. Yeah, I just uh, first question is in terms of geographical mix. Uh, can you share the uh, north, east, west, south mix revenue mix in FI22? So, so Manish, North will be 60, 70 percent, and uh, rest will be divide, divided among uh, uh, the equal zones. Uh, okay. And can it possible to share uh, basically how the growth in basically rest? I am basically specific uh, in terms of uh, North. I know basically are larger, right? So, wanted to understand the overall growth. If you look at, so can you break it up uh, how the North has grown and the rest of the geographies has grown in the FI22? So if you see, I mean, we have grown at uh, 50%, right, at company level. Yes. Um, yeah. So north will be like 20-30%, um, uh, 30-35% north, and uh, and the other states, because south we got uh, the plant uh, 15, 18 months ago. So uh, okay. in east uh, we started uh, the production 12 months ago, and, uh, and Ahmedabad also, the west zone also started contributing uh, in a big way in last 12 months. So I guess uh, I mean uh, all the three zones uh, which are which are re relatively new, so they are growing much faster, right? Uh, like maybe 100 percent some of the uh, some of the markets, and uh, north uh, with higher base should be 30 35 percent. Okay, and in terms of a dealer or retailer, right? So it's a ratio will remain same as a as a, as a revenue. That's right. Okay. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, particularly for this quarter, uh, other expenditure is quite high. So, what was the? Uh, is there any one-off or some any other item which which is flying to the other expenditure during the quarter? Okay. Uh, can you please repeat? Uh, if, if you look at the fourth quarter, other expenditure, right? Uh, it is quite high. This like uh, it reached around 25 or crores for the last year, uh, almost 12, 13 crores. So, is there any uh, one-off item or any incremental item flying into the number? So, so there are two things. One is uh, the ad spend, and second is uh, because of the increase in the freight and other expenses. Okay. And last question in terms of uh, basically overall volumes, if you look at for the year, right? Uh, we have grown on, uh, we have grown broadly on 14, 15 percent. So can you uh, can you highlight uh, what is the agri business growth and the non agri uh, growth in terms of volume? So agri would have been like below five percent, uh, right? And uh, whatever growth you are seeing is uh, from building material. Okay, understood. Okay, that's from my side, and all the best. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call. Thank you very much.